But I think it's important these first few classes that we try to get to know each other a little bit. So just to check in, guys, where we are, because we have still some new folks coming into the class. What I'm asking you to do, if you have not already, is to get your book, to get in on campus. Now, some of you are waiting for your book. We'll be okay for another week. But I would like you to start reading chapter one. Uh, for anybody who's new today, if you'll give me a minute after class, we'll get you up, up, to the, uh, up to speed on everything that's going on after I move these obstacles out of my face. Uh, we also, guys, I've been recording the lectures, but I had some problems with uploads. I think I've got that fixed, so I'll be posting a new link where you can get to the videos once, uh, once I get that final bug worked out. Now today, guys, what we're going to be doing, I have a little bit of class discussion. We're also going to bring back into our groups that we formed on Wednesday to talk about high-risk or low-risk businesses, and we're going to go through the LinkedIn assignment. Uh, five environments of business we haven't gotten to yet because we haven't gotten there in the lecture. Uh, right now, your LinkedIn profiles are going to be due on September 9th. We may move the due date back on the five environments of business if we don't cover it in class. For anybody who's new today, the syllabus is very detailed, but if I have a due date that I list in class or a due date that's listed under the syllabus, which should you listen to? In class because we always get a little behind when there's good conversation I am never ever cutting off conversation for the sake of a timeline I would rather you guys assimilate the material so guys first thing I want to talk about today is a company that you may have heard of has been in the news a lot lately and we're gonna start off class today with a really brief video of products first off before I ask you any other questions what's your impression from the 30 seconds that you got to meet Jewel CEO Come across as a credible or trustworthy guy. What are your thoughts? Yeah, he seems a little shady, doesn't he? Like, he's really afraid about what questions are, are being asked here. Now, there's an ethical issue here that's being brought to light. I'm, I'm saying this not just because I'm, I'm hoping that you don't vape, but when it comes down to it, what is the ethical issue with, with Jules' approach on their advertising? What are, what's being pointed out here? Yes? That they would be targeting you. Absolutely. So we start talking about how they're, they're recruiting people at specific ages. You probably know people who use Juul products. What ways did Juul potentially target to people who are under the age of 18? Yes? Bright colors, flavors, and they're advertising people. I mean, if you look at their ads, they tend to have people who look like they're probably teenagers. And the, the bright colors, the flavors, they're all berries and candy kind of flavors. All these sorts of things. We're, we're actually saying right now that vaping might even be a public health crisis. What I would like you guys to do for me, uh, because we, we try to keep things anonymous here, if you could get out your smartphone or your laptop, and I would like you to go to this web address, Kent Tonkin, or I'm sorry, wholeeb.com forward slash Kent Tonkin 063, and I would like you to tell me if you think that, that this was an intentional uh, problem that Jewel had created. Or do you think that they absolutely are not directly marketing to teenagers? What's your thought? So it's polyev.com slash Kent Tonkin 063. We'll see if anybody uh, takes the other side. Because I always love it when people have opinions. So we've got some folks who think maybe they weren't marketing to teens. That's okay, too. I, I, I want to hear your opinions, too. We'll give a second for everybody to answer Well, somebody who, who said no, that they don't believe Joel was marketing to teens, will you speak your mind, please? Well, I said no, but my answer is really completely no. Okay. Uh, because, um, well, I don't think originally Joel came out um, with the specific intent to get teenagers addicted to teen. Uh, I think that um, it did be, they didn't realize they made a nice trend. I think it, at first it was like, wow, this thing is small. Um, Sealable and for smokers, it'd be a nice thing to have to quit off of uh, smoking. It's very high tech. Yeah, very yeah, and it's. Uh, but then um, I remember like in high school hearing about like like probably like my sophomore junior year. I remember hearing like a joke like, what the heck is that? And I kind of saw it and I was like, that is so stupid. Like that, you know. I was like, what is what is this? Um, and then I think that uh, without trying, they got a market of uh, underage 
smokers, and then once they had them, once they realized, once they found who their people were actually buying the product, then they started. Then they, I would agree that they did start to target teens, and they came up with all these different flavors and colors, and uh, uh, kind of make it cool. But um, I mean, the argument is solid to say that uh, although we. They probably were that a lot of their sales are going to underage kids. Um, it, it's fair to say that like um, younger people who were smoking cigarettes, that you know millennials, as you said, um, are still applicable with the with that kind of mark, like with the cool colors. And, sure. And so it is, it is that is a good art, you know, a good argument. But um, unfortunately, uh, it also is a big, you know. It, it also attracted uh, you. So. Great nuance, by the way, to, to your, your point on that. And that is, perhaps the company intentionally wasn't intentionally targeting yeah, teenagers. I yeah, I don't think it was like the company mission statement, we're going to get teenage, teenage but, um, <laughs> we, we have some folks who want to join the conversation. Ma'am. Um, so I used to work at like a sheets. Um, and a lot of people before they watch them, which I was 21, but my mom's always told me, and I believe it now, that like there's not enough study. Like huh. cigarettes have been around for like 50 plus years, and they cause lung cancer in their study. Vaping and like dueling hasn't been around for maybe like five, six years. There's not enough studies. Like, does it cause lung cancer? Does it not? Mm -hmm. What damage would it do down the road for people who are like adolescents vaping and stuff? Mm -hmm. uh, it's an excellent counterpoint. Yes, sir. So I've never seen the less like I'm sure I have seen, but I have never been to the point of space, so I never think to notice. So I use little notes. And when you look at how they design their ads, irregardless of whether they started the company to market to teens, at this point it's very obvious. Because the, the youngest millennials, depending on how you identify your generations, because that's always a little fuzzy there. The youngest millennials are between twenty one and twenty five. Right. You know, and you're not going to be making, you typically you're not making great geometric patterns and honestly distressing models going to their face to market to somebody who's 25 and in the workforce. It's, it's an excellent point. So there is targeted marketing going on there. And even if you want to make the case that they're trying to come up with a viable alternative to smoking, smoking's been declining. I, I, at least I think I've seen a trend of smoking declining in the younger generation. So if you're going to be trying to convert smokers, you're going to have to be appealing to older people as well. Yeah, I, I agree. You're not going to be appealing to them by, you know, models looking like they're in high school and bright geometric patterns. You're going to be appealing to them on the health benefits of, you don't want cancer, so use our product. So whether they started with targeted marketing or just moved into it at this point, I think there's, there's more than a solid case for them trying to underage kids as an addictive chemical. Let's keep the conversation going. Um, well, I think at first, like, I don't know, like, I think that now it's more targeted towards teens because you walk in sheets and they have, like, those dual skins, you know, that you can put on the dual that are, like, a bunch of different colors and, like, different patterns. So I think now that they know that teens are using duals, that they It's not like it's just like it's. And I've like seen like you'll see videos on like I don't know if anybody watches TikTok and like videos, but <laughs> um, they have like videos of like kids like probably they're like teenage kids and they'll like weigh out all their packs that they've ever bought and stuff like that. And so mm -hmm. like I think it's like yeah. Oh, that's a, yeah, it's definitely a thing. Maybe we have time for maybe one more comment. Anybody else want to join in? Guys. Yeah, please. Yeah, well, sorry. They originally were sued. The original jewels had a, like a diamond, so like you put the pot in, um, but it would make like a diamond shape. And Marlboro sued them because it resembled Marlboro's Marlboro's uh, logo, kind of like that diamond shape. Uh -huh. um, so I don't know if that was intentional, but that that uh, that kind of shape did look like a like a Marlboro kind of 
I don't know, so maybe uh, you could, you know, people with Scott Barbara's kind of stuff like that. No, I think there's something to that. And one more, why not? And um, I don't know if this is, I'm pretty sure this is where a lot of like my friends like lived and stuff, and then they told me, and like um, reports came out that Jewel, when they went on their investigation for her being adolescence, that some Jewels have more percentages of nicotine in them, and they couldn't like have it all the same to the factory. And some flavors have higher or lower. Huh. So that could cause, like they said, the mango had, they were branding it 50, but the mango could have had up to 100. So wow. they could like brand it, like, oh, it's only 50, and then get kids more addicted. You're getting what you bargained for. Yeah. More than you bargained for, I should say. Guys, there's there's two points to this, and the reason I bring this up, uh, well, actually three points. One is a case of business ethics. Are companies doing the right thing by consumers? That's one. Number two, there's actually kind of a, a public health crisis that's going on with this. I don't know if you've been hearing in, in places like New York and New England, quite a few people are ending up in the hospital with what we refer to as chemical pneumonia. And what that means is you've taken in enough of a chemical to give you pneumonia-like symptoms, even if you don't have pneumonia. It's, it's because of the, the particulates. Even though this is safer than smoking, it goes directly into the lungs very quickly. And, and the third part is, guys, Back in the 1990s, uh, and I'm going somewhere with this, I promise, General Motors would lose money on every Chevy Cavalier they sold. Why did they keep selling Cavaliers? Yes. Very much so, and there's one other reason. They want to get you in the family. People who are likely to buy Chevy Cavaliers are probably younger people who are at school, develop a grand loyalty, you're going to stick with it. And if you have an addictive product, you're even more likely to stick with it. So there are ethical issues abound in this particular scenario. Guys, what I just presented to you is pretty similar to what I would say if you ever wanted to do an extra credit presentation in this class. If you wanted to facilitate a conversation, these are great conversation starters. And I'm very grateful that you're willing to jump in a conversation today. When we got together on, on uh, Wednesday, we formed into groups and I ask you to start coming up with ideas for businesses that were risky or for sure things. Can I ask you to reassemble into your groups, please, if, if you moved around the room? Get with the people you were with on Wednesday. If you're new to the class today, we're going to put you in a group. And what I'm going to ask you to do is just get back up to speed on what, what businesses you're talking about, and we're going to report out. Remember, we're talking about risk.